Welcome back to the Sanders Kitchen. I'm Mike, got a great recipe for you today. One of my favorite desserts to eat, apple strudel. All the ingredients are gonna be in the description below. So don't worry about if I miss something, believe me, it's all gonna be written down. You can copy it and, and make this. And by the way, I will tell you, it's so easy to make. I've made this a dozen times already and I can make it so fast. And all the details are gonna be there. And once you do it a couple times, let me tell you, it's real easy, it's delicious. So I want you to follow along with me. We're gonna show you what's in the ingredients right now. You know, we have the star to show right here, some Granny Smith apples. We're gonna peel them and core them really good. We're gonna be using butter, chopped pecans. We have some bourbon soaked white raisins, or I'm sorry, California gold raisins. We're gonna be using our phyllo dough. That's uh, thawed out already. Now, if you're gonna use it and you go buy that frozen, don't worry about making it at home, it's too hard and thaw it out for a day in advance, okay? Um, we're gonna be seasoning our apples with cinnamon, allspice, some nutmeg. We have some sugar, some brown sugar in fact. And um, I'm probably gonna squeeze a little squeeze of lemon in there. And by the way, we got some homemade vanilla. Pam makes it with vanilla beans. Um, can you see the vanilla beans in there? Yeah, you don't have to go out and buy it. You just get the vanilla beans and put the stuff in it and hey, it's all, uh, you know, it's online. You'll see how to do it. Pam loves pure almond extract. And I said, why put both? But we tried it, oh my God, it's so good. You're gonna love it. So almond extract. And of course, we have the shaker for the end of the whole show, you know, where we're gonna shake on some powdered sugar, confectioner sugar, whatever you wanna call it. And I gotta tell you a little story real quick. <laughs> I bought this one made by Tablecraft, and I, I don't know where I got it, it you know, but I, I bought about two or three of them. And then when I went to use this one, I couldn't get this lid off to save my life because it's not the right lid. And I finally got it off but I want you to know that I, I contacted the company Tablecraft and told them what happened. And it's just useless, really. I mean, a, the, the lid wouldn't, won't go back on. They were nice enough to not only apologize, but they sent me two more and they work great. Thank you, Tablecraft. You guys are great. That's a company that has great customer service and I'm so glad that there's still companies out there that recognize, uh, you know, just a small detail like that goes a long way. So Tablecraft, thank you so much. They're not sponsoring me, by the way. I, I just gave them that because they treated me so nice. Anyway, there's a bunch of things you need to have to make this a uh, strainer, uh, a nice measuring bowl or whatever, a bowl to put it in. And I have another bowl on the side for when we cut the apples up. By the way, you know, I'm gonna squeeze a little lemon in there, but I'm not gonna use lemon water because by the time I start sauteing the uh, apples, you know, getting everything cooked down a little bit, they're all gonna put all these seasonings in, they're all gonna turn brown anyway. So I'm not worried about trying to waste my lemon juice on keeping the apples from turning brown before I cook them. Uh, Makes sense? Okay, I get it. And uh, this is a little white sugar because, uh, and a little extra butter, because I'll show you how we're gonna layer the the phyllo dough later. Man, this is a great dessert. You're gonna love it. All right, I'm gonna show you how I do the apples first and then we're gonna start cooking because I got everything ready. So let's get started. So let me show you exactly how I prepare my Granny Smith apple. So come on over here, get a good look at this. It's really easy. Get you a good apple cora. Align that baby with the stem, give it a twist because it's got these little choppers, these little cutters on the end. So give it a little twist and then push it down. As you twist, comes right out the bottom, takes everything out with it, and then this beautiful little plastic thing just knocks that core right out and that's it. Now, we're done with the core. Now we're gonna get a good sharp peeler and we're gonna peel this uh, apple here. Now, I don't think you really need to watch the whole thing, but you know, however you can peel it, 
is up to you. All right, we're gonna get this done kind of quick. If you got a little green left on it, don't worry about it. Not gonna hurt anything. Okay. Now, this is how I cut my apple. And if the green bothers you a little bit, look, take a little paring knife and just, just get that right off of there. And it doesn't bother me any, I'll leave it on. So I wanted to show you exactly how to cut it, cut the apple up. It's, it's really simple. Start slicing it across just like this, maybe half inch pieces, okay? And if that happens, just throw it over to the side. You don't want that one in there because it's wobbly. So take it out and then just come over here, cut that up, cross it again, cut it up a few times. And there you are, you got all your apple pieces. And if you get this to happen, well, you know what? Chop it up a little bit more by hand. It's no big deal, right? And it's that easy. So there you go. We're ready to start cooking. Man, let's get this skillet on and we're gonna melt down this uh, butter right here. All right, the butter's almost melted and I'm just gonna go ahead and pour in my brown sugar and spread that out. Now I'm gonna add in my raisins Ooh, you gotta be careful with that too, because if that's bourbon, it's got a little alcohol in there, you don't want that to catch on fire, right? Okay. So, I'm gonna turn my fire down just a little bit. I'm gonna add in my pecans and my apples. Okay, and we're gonna start cooking the apples in that sauce. Now the apples are gonna release a little water too. Now it's gonna take about five minutes to cook these apples down. Now you wanna stir to get the, uh, get the apples mixed in with the sugar and the butter and you know, and all the, and all the spices that we're getting ready to put in too. So let's go ahead and just spread that around a little bit. And let's add in our spices. Now what we have here is some cinnamon. You'll notice it's a, it's a brown color. Just spread that out a little bit. Then we have allspice. Now the allspice is even darker. <laughs> it's pretty and it smells good. And then we have some nutmeg. I'm putting in some nutmeg. I'm not gonna put in too much. Just a little bit of nutmeg goes a long way. And let's stir that in, y'all. Mmm, oh my God, does that smell good. Oh boy, oh boy. Now we're not making apple pie, so I'm not adding flour or, or any other ingredients. I'm just wanting to flavor up these, these little tart Granny Smith apples. And because I love the way they taste. You know, you could use any apple you want. It's really not a problem. You can use several different kind of apples. Whatever you have available. I like my Granny Smiths, but you don't have to use Granny Smith. All right. So I'm going to cook these for about another three or four or five minutes. And I'll tell you how I know when they're cooked. I'm gonna take a fork and I'm just gonna do like you do a potato, right? And just, when it's fork tender, I'm, it's good enough. And then we're gonna take it out, take all that out, put it right here in this strainer and, and uh, that's the next step. So give me, a, give me a few minutes to wrap this up here. The apples are finished cooking. It took about five minutes. I turned the fire off and now, I'm going to just carefully run this right through this little strainer right here. Oh, I tell you, that, uh, 
that sauce that's coming off of these apples, woo! Staying in line, baby, I'm telling you. That stuff is uh, like gold, liquid gold, you know? I know you can't see it, but uh, oh man. So we're gonna let this cool. Uh, let me get this right here. So it's gonna keep on dripping down and cooling off. In the meantime, we're gonna change the set and get ready to start assembling the strudel. Everything is ready. We're gonna take our first phyllo dough carefully, lay it down here. Watch how this happens. Now you're gonna take your melted butter, 30 seconds in the microwave, and just give it a little drizzle, just like this. Now once you give it a little drizzle, then you just wanna give it a little paint. Now we're not, you know, we're not painting a wall, so it doesn't have to be like solid butter all the way across. Okay? All right. Then we're gonna take a little sugar, like this. That's why it's kind of hard to tell somebody exactly how much sugar to put. You just want to sprinkle a little sugar on there. And now we're going on to our second layer. Let me see, where can I pull it from? This little corner right here looks good. Now, being really careful. Now, we don't want to layer it right over the thing, the bottom layer. We're going to come up about an inch, okay? My goodness, okay. I want this to look good. And I'm gonna pull it over here just a little bit more, and I did it. See, now it's sticking to the bottom layer. And we're gonna repeat the step. We take a little butter, come over here, drill this lid on. Give it a little paint. Need a little bit more drizzle? Come on, drizzle it on and then paint it on. Alrighty, a little bit more white sugar. And now we're gonna continue on until we get 10 of these layers. So I'll see you in a little while. I'm gonna keep on working until I get 10 layers. We're gonna come over here and just keep coming up about an inch. That way, when we get through, this thing's gonna be way over here. And that way when we go rolling, you know, we start rolling the strudel up, we'll have plenty of room to, to roll it and fold it under and everything. So, see, okay, so we're on layer three and I'll see you in a little while. Well, we layered the last layer down and believe it or not, I got 11 layers because I had one left over. I said, well, let's just use it, you know. So I had a little butter left and I'm gonna just go ahead and moisten up some of these edges here. Like that. And uh, sprinkle my last little sprinkle of sugar on that one and I'm done with that. And now, I'm gonna take my apples and I'm just gonna pour them right here, like that. Now this is gonna be a big fat roll because no matter how much apple you have, you can't go out any further than about an inch and a half to the end. So we're gonna go ahead and use your hand, okay? Just make sure your hands are clean. I wash my hands. Ooh, these apples are still a little warm, but it's okay. I got plenty of dough to hold these apples. Look, you just take and mount them up like that. See that? You don't want to get them too close to the end. And you'll see why in just a minute. Okay, there's one more thing I need to have. Well, I gotta wash my hands a little bit here. Hang on. Okay, I'm back. Let's see, what drawer did I put that baby in? Nice big flat spatula. So what we're gonna do is come underneath here. Now you, you can use the parchment paper. That's, that's actually a great idea. 
and kind of give it a roll. And while you're rolling it, you want to tuck that in. See, you want to tuck that in like that. Okay. Try to try to make it look like a little roll rather than just big flat. Okay. And then give it another roll. Now, before I go any further, this is what I was talking about. You got to take this. Now there's a lot of butter on here, and so I don't have to add any additional butter. But you see, you want to go ahead and roll that end over. You want to roll that end, fold that end over like that. Then when you keep on rolling, see, your ends are nice and tight. And there we go. We got it. Now we want to take and lift that. Transfer that thing right back to the paper. See how easy that was? And now I need my sheet pan. Where's my sheet pan at? Right here. We'll put that right here, like that. And now. Let me go ahead and crack my egg in the thing here. Because all we want is some egg white. Come on. There it is. Isn't that neat? Okay. Guess what? I don't have another brush ready, so I'm just going to use this one. It's got a little butter on it, but who cares, right? And I'm going to brush this with some egg white. And we're going to bake this in a 350 degree Fahrenheit oven for 35 to 40 minutes or until it's golden brown. And uh, you'll see it's going to be beautiful. And I'm painting it liberally. I, 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 wanted, I want to get this phyllo dough nice and saturated with the egg. Because I want it to be real pretty. And I think I got it. And that's it. For right now, that is your apple strudel. And I'm going to go ahead and get the oven cranked up. Now, when we come back, not only will it be baked, and I'm going to show you some pictures of it during the process, but it's going to be cooled down because you got to let this thing cool down completely before you can start putting all the, the topping on the, uh, the glaze. And you put, put a nice cold glaze on a hot apple strudel, it's going to melt all over the place, right? So we're going to get this in the oven, let it cool down, and we're going to get back with you, man. It's going to be great. Woo! -hoo! Look at that beautiful strudel. It's out of the oven. Cooled it off with a little fan. Blowing it up and over. So it's cooled down pretty nice. I could feel a little slight heat still coming out of the middle, but it's, it's nice. Then I took this spatula and I slid it underneath to release it off of the paper. See how it's sliding off of the paper now? That's what I wanted. <clears throat> I wanted to get it loose. Because the next thing we're going to do is transfer it to this plate right here. Okay? So I probably could just fold this back and bring it over here. Ha uh, uh, ha uh. ha. I'm making a mess. Oh, there you go. Look at that. I was thinking about using the spatulas and I probably should have, but I, hey. It's good. So now that we have the strudel here, I'm gonna move it off to the side and we're gonna make the glaze. All right, here's how we're gonna do it. Now I'm gonna take this little quarter teaspoon, measuring spoon here, and I'm gonna pour out just a quarter teaspoon 
of that vanilla. You know a little bit goes a long way on this stuff right here. And just another quarter teaspoon of the almond extract. Okay, here we go. And now, I'm just gonna, this is a, a tablespoon, but all I'm gonna do is take some um, half and half and just put a little bit in. It's kind of hard to say how much, but you just start mixing it up. And I can tell I'm gonna need a little bit more than that. Let me go in, there you go. And we're just gonna keep mixing it, whisking until it comes together in a nice, uh, like mayonnaise or a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit thinner, you know? All right, come on, baby, let's go do it. Let's do it. A Little bit more, a little bit more. It's, it's better to just do, add a little bit of liquid at a time until you know you've got it. You see how it's looking right now? See that? That's the glaze right there. Now that's a little bit thick. But honestly, that's it. That's what you want right there. Boy, I'm telling you the truth. I don't think I had a whole table, probably about one tablespoon of half and half, and now it's all it took. All right, so let's put this out of the way. Let's bring our little plate over here. Let me wipe this up a little bit, bring my plate over. Isn't that pretty? That's beautiful. All right, so what we're gonna do I'm going to mix this up, and then I'm just going to come over here and drizzle it back and forth. Okay, let me come over here and get a little bit more. And just a little drizzle back and forth. Look at that, how pretty. And there we go. Doesn't take a lot. <clears throat> now, I'm going to take my special little shaker. Shake on a little extra powdered sugar like that. And a little bit in the plate. You know, look at that how pretty. And there you have it. You got some beautiful apple strudel right there. Ooh, where do I cut this baby? Mmm. Maybe I'll just cut it like right here. Straight across, huh? Maybe on a little bit of an angle. How about that? Oh, look how flaky it is. Yeah, that is nice. Oh, boy. Mmm. Oh, that's awesome. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> you know what? Every time I eat this, I say the same thing. Best apple strudel I ever had. Mmm. I'm telling you. Mmm. Golly, Moses, that's so good. You could just take a look in there and, and see all the apples and the, the raisins, those little golden California raisins. They're so delicious and plump. Mmm. And the phyllo dough is so crunchy and flaky and it's beautiful. It tastes great. God, I could just dig into that. So fast, amazing. Guys, I gotta tell you, one of the best apple strudels I ever had. This is just a basic apple strudel, nothing super fancy about it, tastes great. I only wish my dad was still alive to eat some with me. He would tear this baby up with me. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video on apple strudel. Man, make you some of this. I think you're gonna enjoy it. Have a good hot cup of coffee with it, or even better, a scoop of ice cream. Man, you'll love it. So enjoy it. Give me a, leave me a comment. Let me know how you like it. Uh, everything will be in the description. By the way, thumbs up. If you haven't yet, give us a subscribe. You know, subscribe to our channel. Hit the notification bell. That way you know when we're coming out with all our new videos. And as I always say, 
Go cook you some apple strudel. Have a great week and God bless you.